believe me, it's a real pleasure to uh, be sitting here talking with this gentleman tonight. He's just concluded. I'm going to be honest with you. We're doing this uh, interview tonight at about 10 minutes past the hour of 12 o'clock, which is early Sunday morning. It's a pleasure to be talking to this gentleman. He's had a hectic evening. The amazing Creskin. Good of you to come over here, believe me. Jim, you are a gregarious man, really <laughs> gregarious. I, I just finished for the Chamber of Commerce here in the city at Catanning. Right. You know, I happen to. I, uh, in fact, I came in from Vermont today. It was a ra we we came in by way of Moscow and Venezuela. No, no, our flight was held up, and it was one of those endless experiences. But I love this area. I my father, uh, my father's side of the family are all from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Down east. Yeah, and I've got about. I'm half Polish, half Italian. I hear endless humor. And I, <laughs> and I got about 40 relatives out in the Bethlehem area, really? and my career started, started in Pennsylvania. You know, it's interesting. I, I got to mention this only because we're so near uh, Pittsburgh, but people don't realize. Uh, long before Carson had me on, and really Joey Bishop, uh, I got to give all credit. Joey Bishop uh, and then Mike Douglas uh, became very important in my career, but uh, and Steve Allen had me on. But before that. It was a man doing television not too far from here out in Pittsburgh by the name of John Reed King. Remember him? I remember him very well. And he made me a host on his show for a couple of weeks. So I met a lady tonight. She says, Kreskin, I saw you before you were on Steve Allen. Where could you have been on? Pittsburgh's been good to me. This whole area has. Well, you're going to be good to us tonight. You know, I've seen you on the Carson Show many times. I'm, I'm 88 times. At least. At least. <laughs> well, that's the total I've been on. Well, I watch the show more than Carson's on it. <laughs> you know, I think he does, too. <laughs> Listen, the man is... Uh, the man's a genius in his own right. When you think of the... Uh, I'm interested in communication. I'm interested in people. And to think that he's been on longer than anybody has done it, he's a hard taskmaster on himself and uh, remarkable. You know who was my biggest influence. Nobody would ever guess. They would say, well, you know, they'll mention some, someone in the field of parapsychology or so forth. But the greatest influence in my life was a man by the name of Arthur Godfrey. The old redhead. Yeah. He, the ukulele player. Yeah. He, uh, he had a quality in the 40s and 50s. You could not... We, we've got to realize that for almost 15 years, you could not pick up a magazine on the newsstands where Jacqueline Kennedy was on the cover. But Edward R. Murrow pointed out years ago that you could not walk into any news store where his picture was not on more than one cover at any one time from the mid-40s to the mid-50s. And uh, it fascinated me, his ability to make you feel, Jimmy, as if he was talking only to you, even though you were only one of millions looking in. And that's what really triggered off my fascination with the mind. That's really what did it. I, it was not not seeing some dramatic uh, feat on the stage. And I've never remain, never left being a child of the mind. We don't know that much about it. No, it's a very, very elusive thing. It really is. And you speak about talking to one person. That's so darn important to me. If I can't hear what you're saying, I can't do a decent interview with you. You said something very significant here. There's a story... <laughs> And uh, since the person is no longer in WR in New York, there's no harm in even mentioning the anecdote. Years ago, and I don't know if it was Charlton Heston, I'm not sure which person it was, but uh, he was being interviewed by a lady who had interviewed him before on the radio. And you folks at home have to gotta kind of think about this. They're talking. And she hadn't seen him for a while. And she said, gee, uh, how are you? And he said, uh, he said, I'm, he said, I'm okay. He said, uh, I just gotten over my my mother had passed away, but I, I've gotten over it now. She says that's good. She said, "What else has have she never heard the remark?" Not a word. And that's that was the key with Godfrey and with Jack Parr and a number of other people. We don't. Uh, the truth of the matter is, psychologists and behaviorists have studied Jimmy and found that in a telephone conversation, if you hear forty percent of what's said, that's remarkable. We don't really here as much as we did in the past and the reason may be in part because our world today is so filled with sound it's a barrage 
you you can be dining and music. We now have music. I'm, I'm sure, as you know, Jim, we have music to sleep by, music to eat by. There's music to digest food with, music uh, to listen to certain lectures with. I understand there's music if you want to be ill or sick to your stomach. They're preparing music to help in that area. So we learn to turn it off after a while. <laughs> there, by the way, the, you, you'll notice, folks, there is no music right now. It's pure <laughs> verbal sound. Well, after the day you've had, uh, I think tonight you're going to rest well. You know, and well, yes, especially since you were going to mention. You, he asked me just before we started, I find my check, and uh, some people, uh, I guess not too many anymore, uh, are uh, do, may not know that in all my programs my check is hidden. Right, I know this. And the uh, and the Chamber of Commerce here uh, took my check. I left. I left the room under guard. In fact, I want to tell you, not only was under guard, but I had a doctor with me and also a priest. So when I came back, I couldn't lie. That's to <laughs> take I, you both ways. <laughs> take me both ways. <laughs> so anyway, they, uh, the agreement was if I didn't find my check, the audience hit it anywhere. And that's a pretty large, uh, uh, that's yeah. a hall, that's an arena. And if I didn't find it, I would forfeit it. And it was not, in the, it was not amongst the audience. In fact, that just, just surprised me because I walked down the middle of the group. I, uh, I I think, in fact, I think I walked right past President Dewar down an aisle where people were, had been dining and left that area and turned left and walked away from almost 600 people. And in the back of the uh, arena was a telephone. And I saw a telephone directory under it. And as I touched it, I realized that the subject was thinking, no, Kreskin. And then I realized and I had never in my life I had it hidden there. I went into the the return change thing and opened it, but there was no check. And I opened it again. There was no check. I started talking to myself. I was saying, "This is crazy. Why am I doing this?" I realized he was thinking I should put my finger into the return change slot and move my finger up into it. They had lodged it up there, and out came the check. Talk about Carson, though. What nobody knows is a few years ago, when a show was over on the Carson show, and the viewers never knew it. The producer came out and said, okay, Kreskin, you've been talking about this check test so long. Find your check for tonight's Carson appearance. We're off the air. You're not on any time bind. 320. And I went over and I went around and I went to Carson's uh, chair. And I finally went to Ed McMahon's chair and I took out the cushion and reached down in it. And there was the check. And I am the only person in the history of the Johnny Carson show that was paid double. They paid me for the test. You didn't work for scale at night. <laughs> no, they gave me the scale. <laughs> Good being here, Jimmy. Can I ask you one fast question? I know you're tired. Kreskin, well, how did you come up with the name Kreskin? My name was originally Kresge. Same, um, half Polish, the same as the department stores. I had no in, uh, financial interest in it or my career wouldn't have taken so long to get together, <laughs> to get my act together, if I will. I, but I didn't want a name that was competing with a uh, another name that was established. So when I was in junior in high school, I went up to my uh, one of my teachers, a Mrs. Smith, one morning, either during homeroom, I think it was during homeroom period, and I said, Mrs. Smith, I want to put together a new name, but I don't want to lose all of Kresge. And the night before, I had I decided to drop the G-E. I added K. K was the first letter of a man by the name of Keller. Keller, K-E-L-L-A-R, was a famous performer, the turn of the century, who was uh, mystified people. I-N were the last two letters of Houdin, H-O-U-D-I-N. There's a postage stamp out of France commemorating the anniversary of Houdin's death. He was a Frenchman. And another American took Houdin and added I to it and made Houdini. So I took the last two letters of Houdin, the first letter of Keller, added K-I-N to Kreskin, and made the one name. Not only is it my origin my name, it's, there's no, other, no one else has the name, it's the only name I have, and it took me a while to convince credit card people and airline people that I only had one name. The airline people, because most airlines, I think, as you know today, are not run by human beings, they're run by computers. Right. And they are uh, very scary to deal with because they don't have... <laughs> we won't go into that. Right. But anyway, so it is only one name, and uh, I've stayed with it. And it will be like that for the rest of my life. Okay. I know you're tired, and I do appreciate your coming over. Good people, you've had the pleasure, as I've had, of sitting here listening to the amazing Kreskin. 
again, I'd like to thank you very much for coming down on the, uh, this private interview. I want to thank Bob Dorr, who's sitting over here in the audience. and nice also, man. Oh, nice wonderful man. fellow. I won't be able to talk to him tomorrow, but tonight, <laughs> he's, to, tonight he's a wonderful fellow. And your road manager, Steve Wood, sitting over there. Thanks. That's a plug. <laughs> thanks very much, Steve. Appreciate it. Well, good people, we'll see you in a little while. Stay tuned, won't you?